twelve years. Mm -hmm. Now the thousand year toilet is going to be available. Uh -huh. Not a big box storage because you have to measure the actual body of the individual. Yes. Let's say your your own student is two years behind the rest of the students is <laughs> approximately five to eight inches taller than all the other students for whatever reason. Yes. We're going to make sure that there isn't a student anywhere in the United States that is in the wrong grade unless they actually have the academic need to be a grade behind. But this idea of two grades behind, yeah, I think it does violate the actual laws. Mm -hmm. Now, when looking through the technology, yes, uh, I had noticed that there's certain improvements that we could be making. I'm going to want to know the spectrum in, in use in every school, yes. And then, um, I was watching a show called Modern, Modern Marvels last night, yeah, considering I have no cable available to me. <laughs> you know, this high-pressure, high-temperature plastic, yes. I was impressed with the size of machinery. In fact, I had redesigned some machinery. Mm -hmm. You know, when you have half the weight and the actual strength of light tinsel strength metals, yes, there's a possibility of making front end loaders out of plastic, uh, most of their moving parts, yes. Now, maybe not the bucket, but the other parts that don't dig into the ground, yes. And then there were some manufacturers that were using their own smeltering plants, yeah. I was wanting to recycle most of the junk cars of the United States of America. Yes. And smeltering that up to a composite metal strength of about four to 5,000 degrees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thinking that would desalinate some water while, uh, while cooling the metal. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say you had a tinsel strength of a composite junk metal. Yes of probably two to five times the actual strength of the metal that's being used in the manufacturing of the largest heavy equipment of the United States. In fact, I found out, yeah, somebody had been engineering tires that cost $180,000 to replace every six months to 12 months, and I had designed the half-million-mile tire. Yes, we did. I thought semi-trucks could use uh, a half a million mile tires, and a lot of semis, they go a million miles. <laughs> but when I saw the size of those tires and the engineering involved in making it, I thought for $180,000, I could chop up some old tires, heat it up to approximately oh, 3,500 to 4,000 degrees, yes, cool it and form it into a tire that was needing to be replaced uh, every, all oh, three to five years. Right. <laughs> now at $180,000 a tire, <coughs> I thought I was missing out on a lot of industrial manufacturing that should be available to me. <laughs> now a lot of these big machinery uh, makers, yes, they're using a lot of the old innovations where I could make most of the actual machinery out of recycled garbage that can be smeltered and it can be molded if so as to not have the heaviness yeah and then when you're using 1500 gallons a day to run one of these and a lot of it is just uh, the manufacturing of electricity because of the size of the electrical generator yeah necessary to run the hydraulic yes. I think I can cut the cost. Mm -hmm. I can reduce the weight of heavy equipment by half as much. Yes. And I can make myself a very healthy profit in the very largest of industrial machinery. <laughs> now, I like the idea of cutting across um, this coal mining where you just strip all the dirt off. Yes. I found out because of government regulations that you have to put that back after you take the coal out. <laughs> I thought it was stupid. Why don't I just put all of that human waste, slurry it up, yes, and put it in there and just put a little dirt on the top of it and call her good, <coughs> as if it would compost, yes. Now, all that good dirt that you're having to put back after you've already scraped it off the earth, mm, you would think that that would be saleable, yes, to some of those that want some topsoil, bottom soil, or whatever soil they want, yes. 
why don't I get you to sell me all of your human nutrient? Yes. I will pay you one dollar for every million pounds of it. Mm -hmm. And you can pay me whatever you're paying to treat it right now. Yeah. In transportation costs. Yeah. Sounds like a good deal. I'll give you a 10% discount for every million gallons of human nutrient that you give me. <laughs> And then for all of those involved in the strip mining of the coal industry, yeah, don't put it back. <laughs> you would think soil would be soil. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we can make a little railroad track. We could dump it all in there. Yeah. We could put the old dirt that you took off after you got the coal. We could put it back on top of it. Yes. We could sell off all that dirt for those that want some dirt. Okay. <laughs> we can make money from the coal. <laughs> we can make money from the dirt. We can make money for the transporting of the human nutrient. <laughs> and we would have that very expensive cost of a dollar for every million pounds of it. <laughs> As an expense to doing business. <laughs> Now, I want you to understand right now. <laughs>